Welcome back boys and girls and today we're going to talk about how to start hunting with only $500. Well, I did when I went back to hunting in 2005. First, you start with one weapon. It could be a one rifle with a scope. You guys are so lucky because nowadays you could buy a really inexpensive rifle that shoots really accurately. And like Thompson Sign Compass here, with a scope combo, uh, with a great sale and the rebate, you could get it under 300 it could be a one muzzle loader with a scope and you could still get a CVA uh, muzzle loader with a scope for less than 300 You could get a dependable shotgun in pump action or in semi-automatic for about 300 or a little bit more. You could get a decent crossbow or archery for less than 300 It really depends on what are the opportunities that you have in your area. For me, I started with a muzzle loader because we have a great wildlife reservation where they have lottery hunt and they allow muzzle loader. So I start with a muzzle loader. Now some uh, parks where they have lottery hunt, they will allow shotgun. So you might want to go with shotgun. And some of the military areas, they also allow you to shoot rifles. So you could go with the rifles or like crossbows or archery, depending on where you live and what are the opportunities. I also started with one pop-up line, one small folding chair and a shooting stick and a license and some outfit and I was good to go. I grew up hunting black tails in California with my dad and my brothers. And I stopped hunting altogether when I went to medical school, just couldn't find time. And in 2005, I decided to go back hunting because I missed it so much. Now, only problem was when I asked my wife about it, she told me, well, only if the meat was good. And she told me if the meat is not good and if nobody's eating it, she she won't put up with me shooting animals for fun. So I agree with her. Now, only problem was my memory of black tail wasn't all that great. So I did a lot of research. And then when I felt pretty confident that white tail was good eating, I decided to go uh, back to hunting. And I, I decided to start with minimum equipment. So if I do end up with only one season, I won't regret it. So I only spent about $500 to start the hunt. And just to be safe, I did a lot of research on how to prepare the whitetail venison uh, in a way that it'd be really, really good. So after I was after I was done with all that, I shot my first deal with a muzzle loader. And I brought it home, I did everything that I can do. And just to be safe, first preparation meal was Korean barbecue venison. And my family loved it. And the rest is a history. I still home with a muzzle loader that I started in 2005. This is my lucky muzzle loader. I just shot a big 8 point buck two years ago with this as well. Now, I believe I paid 270 with the scope and everything. And But this was a different scope. Back then I had a Nikon. Uh, this is loophole now. Uh, I think power was, power, power was only up to 9. And again, I paid 270 for it. And so with the uh, black powder and the bullet, I would say I spent probably about 300. Here is our hunting wardrobe, but in 2005, I started with just these two pieces. I bought both of them at Dick's on sale right after the hunting season. For that pants, I paid $9.99, and for that jacket, I paid $29.99. And both of them, I picked the soft fabric, so it won't be so noisy. I still have the first knife that I started to hunt with in 2005. Now, it's got a different case because I lost it in the woods. But this is a hunting knife made by Brownie. And it's got a good weight on it and it's really good to it's really good to use it for skinning. So I don't carry this into the woods anymore because I might lose it. But if you look at it carefully, you can see that it's also falling apart. You can see that pieces are missing now. And if you look at it very carefully, you can see little notches on the golden plate because I notched off every deer, uh, every deer that we shot. And I'm going to tell you how many, but it's got over 100. I also bought a shooting stick, and I still have it, in the one that I used in 2005. And if you look at it, you can see the duct tapes are falling apart. I put a duct tape there so that when the foreign stick goes up there, it won't slide around. And I think I paid like, I want to say like maybe $10 to $12 at digs on sale. But honestly, I'm not too sure. But it was now over $20 for sure. And for the hunting license, I think back then it was somewhere $30 to $35. Today is way hot to be outside, so I'm going to do it in our yoga room in the basement. So I still have the tripod chair that I bought back then. I paid, I think, like $19 for it. 
I thought when it was a bigger chair, but that wouldn't fit in my pop up blind bag. So I went with a smaller one. And it's a very simple one. Just open it up, sit on it, and you're ready. Now for my pop up blind. Yes, I still have it. I think I paid like $49 on a sale back in 2005. But this is pretty neat. The reason I went with a pop up blind was it's safer than a tree stand. <laughs> And I wasn't familiar with it, and I didn't want to spend that kind of money on the first season. And it's really simple, it's fast, you could go anywhere with this, just pop it up. Go inside. And yes, you're ready. The reason I went with a pop-up line is that it's, it's very safe, and you could get away with a lot of movement. And you can have your rifle up. And go into any direction that you want. And it's quiet and you will conceal some of your smell as well. And you could get away with a lot of movement inside the plant because they can't see you that well. The pop-up lines have four windows in all directions. So you could see any direction that you want. And again, this is very roomy. I have actually four people sitting in here, but it's actually made for two people. But it's roomy, comfortable. And you could sit in here and hunt all day and you'd be fine. Okay, this is what I started in 2005. It cost me less than 500. And it worked out really well for me. So I hope this will help you as well. And one more thing, when you buy a pants and a jacket, you wanna have ones that has extra pockets. They come very handy. I could fit my chair, my shooting stick, an outside pocket, knife, water, some snacks. And that's all I needed. And I tell you, man, this really worked out well for me. I, I probably use this very exclusively for the first three, four years. And then for the past 10 years, I have not used it because I had access to tree stands and other stuff. But I never throw away anything that's got to do with hunting. Right? Because I never know when I'm going to need it again. But more than that, it's sentimental value. Yes, over the past 15 years, I accumulated a lot of guns and a lot of hunting equipment. Well, I don't want to say a lot because I still want to get some more. But anyway, but I could guarantee you, if I start a different hobby in 2005 because I had some time, um, I'll, I'll guarantee you it'll cost a lot more money and there will, there would have been no return. And because I'm saving at least $3,000 a year on the mid, on 15 years, that's over $45,000. So I could guarantee I'm still on the profit side. Next, I want to talk about different weapons for hunting and which is actually right for you. And lastly, like always, thank God for what you have. Enjoy your life with what you got. But mostly start small and win big. See ya.